Hello, and welcome to the beginning of my tutorial series where I'll be taking you through my process of making VTube models. Hi, I'm Brianna Banana, and I've been creating VTube models and art and rigging for about two to three years now. And I've got a bit of knowledge under my belt that I wish to share to help you, an aspiring creator, start stronger than you would navigating all this on your own. Today in this tutorial, I will be teaching you the fundamentals and tips on how to start your journey on making VTubers. That will be starting with the art. And to start the art, we need to have our canvas prepped and ready for. Here it is an example of what our canvas would look like. Set up and ready. Sorry, I gotta readjust. Get the movement in. Here's just a typical chibi. My very first chibi I did, like, mm, mm, last year, I think it was. And so she's looking a little rough, but she's just here for a guide image. We'll be starting and making a brand new chibi all the way through this tutorial to help you learn. And hopefully you'll benefit and you'll make your own stuff and everything will be great. So first, canvas. We need to have the right canvas size. I like to make a canvas as a, uh, I think it is 5,000 pixels across, 6,000 pixels up and down. So what we're going to do when we start to get to this pose, we're going to come up to file, we're going to hit new. We're going to get this box. It's awesome. It's beautiful. We're going to have a width of 5,000 and a height of 6,000. I'm not too sure about resolution. It's a 600, so I'm just going to leave it there. And then I like to set my paper color. So this will be the very bottom layer that'll come in for you to be a background to a nice mid-tone gray. This, I very much encourage you to do and practice doing because it'll save your eyes in the long run. This comes in usually as a bright white, pure white. We don't want to do that. That's too bright and your colors will get skewed because of it. You want a nice mid-tone so that your dark colors are dark, your light colors are light, and your eyes don't melt in your eyes sockets. Coolio, do that. Hit OK. Now we have a brand new canvas. Another reason why we have our canvas set to 5,000, which is a very delicious number to divide into two, which would be 2,500 each, because our when you are making a VTube model and it inevitably ends up in Live 2D, the next program step after doing the model art is your canvas needs to be symmetrical and have your model dead center. Because this step is important to know, even if you're not going to be rigging, you need to do this so that your rigger will not cry. Having it dead center means that it's much smoother for them to mirror items over and bring in rotation deformers. And just overall, the mesh quality will be better. Trust me on this, you want a nice, clean, symmetrical cut. But I'm hearing, Brianna, I don't know how to get a symmetrical cut. You're not just going to grab over here your ruler, symmetry ruler. We're not just going to grab that and guess and just drop and then hope for the best. I was doing that for the longest time. Not good. Don't do it. This, this is bad. And I'll show you right here. I draw this. This one over here, this dot is almost touching the edge. There's this nice big gap. This will be a nightmare. <laughs> so what instead we're going to do, right? We're going to come up to view. We're going to go down to grid. And then we're going to go down and hit ruler bar at the same one right under grid and now we have a canvas that has a bunch of lines and looks super scary but it's not because what this does for us having our ruler selected as well it shows us how far across our canvas has like what our width is from zero to whatever number we have for what we want and then it also shows us the um y-axis up and down what i want you to do is i want you to zoom in I want you to go up and I want you to find where 2,500 is. All right, cool. That 2,500 mark is in here, but we need to get a little bit closer because this is being a little bit of a butt. So here we go. 2,500. Awesome. 
And since we see it's up here, what you can do, we do Simichi Ruler held on to, selected, that's the word. You can click down and drag and you will see that this is now going up and down. There is no accidental side to side, no weird angle. It's just up and down directly on the 2500 mark, okay? And then you let go. Now we have this cool purple ruler here. And what that purple ruler does? Bliss. Gives us bliss. We can go back up to view and get rid of the grid and get rid of the ruler bar. We don't need them anymore. If you plan to make more models in the same uh, resolution, I highly suggest that at this stage, you save this canvas. You would go up here and then you would save this canvas as a blank file, which is what this canvas is for me, a blank file. And now when you draw, these are going to be the exact distance apart from each other. Exact distance. Perfect. Delicious. Wonderful. Then, what I like to do, for a peace of mind thing, is I like to come here and I give the ruler a blue color, so that I know this is the ruler and not to draw on this by accident. And then another thing that people don't tend to know you can do, is instead of having a bunch of rulers and all your layers trying to keep them and you know like copying them down what you want to do is you right click on the ruler you come down and you say show in all layers bump that means my cute little friends here is that we can draw on any layer that doesn't have the ruler on it it's very lovely very nice and then if we don't want to be symmetrical anymore say we're fucking drawing ahead we got the ears, we got the eyes, awesome. But now we're like, oh, we wanna draw like a scar that only happens on one side. Come over here, you turn off that layer and now you can draw asymmetrically. There you go. Okay, now that we have the symmetry that we need for making a symmetrical model, in the very center on a nice high resolution canvas i'll tell you why it needs to be this kind of resolution and you wouldn't want to go too much lower but also not extremely higher <laughs> because lower the quality um obviously more pixelation and the higher the quality the stronger the pc needs to be to be able to manage and render this model and then whatever you have inside that model that the uh, rigger will have to move around and manipulate, okay? Now, let me show you why we're doing it this size, okay? So we're gonna come over to file real quick. This is a good way to test stuff, okay? I'm gonna go new. Just a quick 1920 by 1080 is roughly the resolution that you want like your monitor to be at, all right? So this is what you will be seeing on your screen like for a stream for instance what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here we're gonna give it a gray for instance we're just gonna pop this is just to find the right size and then with this select this layer selected here for instance hit Control c to copy this layer people don't know this tip really cool tip you come back over to the canvas that you're working on and you can hit Control v and it'll bring that layer in so whatever you copy from over there, so if I did a little doodle over there, I could bring it over here. And the reason we're doing this, I'm just going to pull down that opacity there so we can see behind it, is that this is what your screen size will be. So if you ever want to get close up into the camera and show off to people like your fancy eyes or your, your pretty movements or anything like that, any details, this is what you want them to be able to see in a good enough quality. So as this is, this would be taking up the whole screen, right? This is what you'll be seeing. So if we start seeing pixelation at this level, that's what everyone else is going to see. So this is pretty good. I don't see any problems here. This is a good enough quality render. This is pretty decent, pretty decent. Cool. No pixelation. We're good at this size. Now remember. This, this is your screen. 
you want to get up and close with your audience if you're a VTuber and you're going to be streaming and you want it to not lose too much quality. But you also don't want it to be too strong that this is like the size of your nose, for instance, if it fits like a tiny little cube here. Because your computer needs to be strong enough to handle that and the majority of people do not have that going on. And so if you're making art for yourself, you know what your specs are. You understand if your computer can handle it. If you're doing it for a client, however, you want to make sure that you give them the best quality with the lowest amount of uh, hardware issues, you know? You don't want to burn their stuff to the ground. All right, coming back to this canvas we'll be working on today. And this is where we will be drawing and making our V2 remodel from scratch that we'll be going through with this tutorial. So I've covered canvas size, why that canvas is that size, and why we want to make sure we keep our re re uh, resolution uh, nice mid-range. If you're doing a chibi, perfect size, perfect canvas, you do not need to go any larger than this. All right. Now, here is my old model for the Cult of the Lamb uh, streaming that I made real quick for myself in a day. It took maybe like four hours of the art and the rig. Now, what you'll be seeing is, I wonder if I should just bring this up over here for you guys. Yeah, I'll just bring it up. Ooh, whoops. Open this up. So what this is, is our layer tab, and I'm just bringing it over here so you guys can see what we're working with, okay? Now, what I do as a structure is I make sure that once everything is named, cut up, and in their right layers, I mark them off in green using the little tab up here. I definitely suggest doing that. It's great. Keeps everything concise. If you start the project at some point and come back, you can know what's done and what isn't done at a quick glance. Very helpful. Now, this is a very simple model, even more simple than a normal chibi would be, because there's not really much for clothing, there's not really much for toggles, it's all just very cut and dry. This is it. This is what you get. Now, what we're doing for structuring with your model is kind of like a lasagna, okay? Lasagna, if you will. Everything is layered. Here, let me the top, all notes. Everything fits as kind of like a fold layer on top of each other, so you just don't see it. That's how it's gonna work in Live 2D. All of this gets turned and you just see a flat image. And so, with that in mind, we need to know how we want to structure this so that we have things sit in front where they need to be sitting and things behind where they need to stay hidden. But what we would end up doing is you would have, you know, your head, and then you'd have, like, under that would be the neck, under that would be your torso, your hips, your legs, your arms, everything like that. It would be, like, your head, neck, or so, hips, legs, your arms, and then anything like a hat or hair goes up above that, that's how that be. Just like a normal human structure, so you just go down the body in layers. And so, that's what we've done here. So I've got, over here is, just bring this over here so I don't get in front of the model as much. We have just a simple little wool neck, and we have the cape that goes over the top of the body. We can take that off because we want to see the body. And a little hair fluff pump. All of this will end up being in a, uh, a, a folder structure of the whole model. We, we make a folder that just has the model. I'll go over this more once we make the actual model. This is just a rough overview to understand a little bit before we get into it. Then we have her hat. We've got her eyes sitting on there, like her eye group, her mouth group, the head itself, and then we have the body in its own another subcategory folder. This one is super simple. Oh, so it's just got the arms, it's got the legs, all of that stuff is just there. They're not cut up. This is an older file. I couldn't find the one where it's all finished. The all finished one is a PSD now. Which, by the way, um, 
when you're done with your model, you need to have it converted. You save it and save it and convert it into a PSD file. That's the only way live TV will take it. It doesn't like anything else. PSD is its only lifeblood. That's all it wants from you. So remember that. So all these fancy colors and stuff only stay on the Clip Studio version. Uh, the PSD file doesn't care for the colors. The colors will disappear. So I would, I keep both versions, the PSD and the original Clip Studio file, just so I can come back and see this stuff if I need to to rechange things, and then I export it again as a play, uh, PlayStation as a uh, PSD. So with all my rambling, you go head, shoulders, knees, and toes down the body that you would naturally. That's how you should be stacking. When it comes to things like uh, the back of clothing or the back of hair, for instance, like if this character here had long, luscious hair, that file, I that layer and stuff, I tend to put below and behind the body just while I'm working so that everything looks nice. Um, hell, even when it's in Live 2D, I keep it that way. You can restructure in Live 2D. It, everything comes in at I mean, a layer 500. That's what it loves to give you loads of room, wriggle room. I don't wriggle. I say, nope, everything is structured the way I want. Thank you, bye. But what you would do is like with this hair, if you drew it up at the head group, you can keep it up in the head group and you would just reduce this number to wherever it is behind everything else. So like, say the body is like at layer 400 because everything else is sitting nicely between you. You would just for yourself, put the hair at layer 399. But I don't need to do that. I keep everything basically at 500 where I need to and do uh, inverse mask clippings. Reiterate. We layer structure down the body, okay? Down the body. All right, with all that said, next tutorial will be going on and we will talk about how to um, start brainstorming and then sketching our idea we would be coming in and we'd be figuring out what we want for our model you know what does it look like what kind of personality does it have posing how do you want things to defaultly look is it asymmetrical is it symmetrical all the way is it feminine masculine is it you know fantasy do we have elf ears do we have one eye do we have uh, cute bangs and then and then it comes out into little little ponytails or something like that what do we got going on you know we'll be figuring that out in the next tutorial i hope this was helpful to start if you have any questions please do ask me i want to help as best i can i love to help with whatever I know, I will tell you. I don't want to gatekeep a single thing. No one does. Any other tutorial place you see on YouTube, on Twitter, on TikTok, anywhere. We want to help you be better. And you being better means that you'll help other people as well, hopefully. And then everyone just gets better and better. And the standard gets higher and higher. And everyone just has a great time learning new things. So it's kind of like a pay it forward situation. I help you. You help someone else. And together, we make lots of fun, interesting things. Alright, thank you guys for tuning in and learning with me a bit today for structuring and setting up our canvas. And I'll see you in the next episode of Tutorials. Bye!